what do we have? We have, uh, um, we have a series of data points, and we want to uh, divide these data points into disjoint classes. But the idea is somehow we're perhaps finding a uh, natural class structure on the data. Um, um, the underlying assumption of, of uh, the, the k-means objective is that uh, um, that each class is going to be kind of well described by uh, a circular ball in, in some space. Okay, so we, we're going to uh, well let's speak more generally first. We're going to uh, to to divide our data up into non-overlapping balls. Um, The comment is, uh, when you see, since we have a norm here, and um, you can imagine, you can immediately replace this norm. You could use two feature maps and use a kernel function here and kernelize it. So for instance, for those of you taking supervised learning, you could immediately uh, do k-means with, say, using uh, the Laplacian distance function. And you, for instance, with that two moons example, you could cluster those two moons perfectly even though they don't look circular in the original space, but transforming them with the graph using the Laplacian pseudo inverse as a kernel, k means works just as well, just as easily. So k means has, even though you're forcing your data to lie in circles, when you look at it Euclidean, from a Euclidean perspective, these circles may have uh, more interesting shapes after you uh, transform with the kernel function. Um, this objective should look fairly similar to probably a number of things you've done already. Uh, we're getting very used to these squared norm objectives. You know, just to recall, least squares, for instance, you could write as finding the, uh, the w such that um, uh, x dot w minus y, the vector of errors, W is our predictor squared. It's minimized. So, you know, you kind of like, oh, yeah, it looks a little bit like K means. We have a little. I mean, I'm not going to, 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 to force this. Um, K means is instead defined by this objective. And unlike uh, other objectives that you've seen so far, in supervised learning. Um, this is the, the first uh, objective function uh, that you're going to work with in supervised learning in this class where the objective is, is non-convex and uh, it, it's not even smooth and there's local minima in it. So um, the popular k-means algorithm, I think sometimes called Lloyd's algorithm, which we're going to present, isn't guaranteed to find the global minima, okay? Um, it's just a, a greedy algorithm. And in fact, uh, finding the global minima, the k-means objective, um, is, a, is equivalent to solving an NP complete problem in the general case. So k-means is perhaps slightly less simple. But in practice, uh, also, the greedy algorithm for k-means, which uh, converges to some local minima, is fast, okay? Um, so at a high level, um, what's, uh, let me ask you a question. Have you done k-means in any of your classes so far? You haven't done it in, in no, OK. I was just curious if sometimes they, they do it in unsupervised learning. Um, OK. Let's use multiple colors. looks like a bunch of x's. And it's easier than our usual setup in that we have maybe no y's. And the idea is that somehow, maybe if we set k equals to 4, we want to find four balls that perhaps separate these points. Okay, And um, so 
So we're going to separate the points in terms of these balls. And we're like, yeah, each of these balls represents a class. Uh, that's the idea. So maybe in this picture, potential balls that might be, is maybe this is one ball, maybe this might be another ball. Uh, maybe this is yet a third ball. Maybe this is yet a fourth ball. Um, but you can imagine maybe there's other balls which are good to divide those points up in. Um, let's understand how the algorithm works, or the idea of the algorithm from the objective. So one way to think about k-means is that you're uh, optimizing over two sets of variables. Um, partition variables, i.e. you're saying which variables are in which cluster, I mean which x's are in which cluster. So for instance, in these four balls I'd have C1 through C4, and perhaps all these points belong to C1. Perhaps all these points belong to C2. So a partition is a way, say we have n points, we're dividing those n points into four classes. Okay. How many ways can we divide up n points into k classes? Yeah, so it's, uh, I always reverse things. So I guess it's <coughs> k to the n. We can label each point with a given class, and then uh, there's n of them. And maybe if four classes look the same, you can divide out the redundancy by four factorial. But roughly speaking, n to the k. Um, so we, we find a partition. Um, associated with each partition, what's going to define a, a, a partition for us is the center. So the, the, the center, uh, often called uh, the prototype point, is somehow, well, is precisely the average point of, of that class. So this point here is, is in the middle of all these points. So that's what I'm trying to draw. It's not necessarily a point in your data set, but we have some point which is in the middle. And uh, that's small c1 through small ck. Okay. So you can think of it, so there's really two perspectives on this problem. We're minimizing over centers <coughs> and prototypes, but uh, as we'll see in a moment, uh, uh, a solution is either defined by the partitioning or it's defined by the centers. Uh, either one is enough to tell the story. Okay, so let's take apart this uh, objective function for a moment. Um, so what are we trying to minimize? Well, from all the points which are, uh, uh, so let's look at the inside sum. So imagine i is equal to 1. We're saying, we want to find a uh, given center i. We want to minimize the distance between all the points um, given center i that are in that partition. So, um, and then we want to do that for each possible uh, partitioning. So. I claim that um, if you give me this, it's enough. Or if I give you that, it's enough. Why, why is the solution specified with either this set of values or this set of values? Any, any questions so far? Why is it enough to give me either the, the partitioning or the prototypes? Yes. Well, if you have a partitioning, you can compute the centers. Yes. Just by averaging the points. Perfect. So, so if you, so we know if we have the partition, we can find the prototypes. Mm -hmm. And the other way around, if you have just the prototypes, you could just assign each uh, point to the closest. Prototype. Yeah. So, so if we if we knew the centers uh, somehow, and we want to minimize this sum, 
Well, the best way to then minimize the sum is to put each point to its closest center. And, and that would uh, minimize the sum. So if you gave me either this or either this, uh, you've given me all, all I need to know about the solution. Um, so uh, you can either look at it then as a, a discrete optimization problem over C1 through CK, or a, a smooth optimization problem over C1 through CK. When I say smooth, I mean an RN. Uh, the objective function won't be perfectly, it's definitely not completely smooth. Um, let's, let's come back to that in a moment. Um, So yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that in a while. Um, so what's the intu what's an intuition why this might not be um, have a single global minimum? One quick in intuition, you know, there's different ways of saying it, but just the fact that if you give me uh, the centers, an equally valid solution is some rearrangement of the, the centers such that you swap them. Okay, so I have four centers, there's four factorial solutions, and you can kind of see that there's not some sort of smooth path between these uh, four factorial solutions, so that shows you at least some uh, um, non- uh, to begin with. Okay, questions? Okay, continue. Um, I'm calling the K means algorithm. I think uh, uh, it's off. I think the person named Lloyd actually came up with it originally. Sometimes called uh, Lloyd's algorithm. Um, so this algorithm won't solve the K means problem. Exactly. Um, I mean, you might get lucky, uh, but the, the hope is is that you know you can find a good uh, global minimum. Let's understand uh, what the algorithm does. Okay. So we're given our data. We're given our input as a number of classes. We choose some set of centers at, at random. Um, we'll come back to this in a moment. Uh, and then the algorithm has um, uh, three steps. Um, first step is, is well, we've, I think it's, I'll go ahead and demonstrate this on the board, even though um, it's better to do that. Yeah, let's do it on the board rather than the notes. So let's say um, these are our, our initial points. And maybe we start out with two centers um, chosen somehow randomly. This is a center and maybe um, first step is called the assignment step. Okay, so now we're going to assign points to the center. So it's just like this idea that was proposed for um, yeah, for, for every point, we're going to build this partitioning. And we're going to say the partition associated with center I is the set of all the X's such that um, uh, that point is nearest to that center, i.e., 
each point, we'll look at where it is relative to each center, and we'll assign it to its nearest center or prototype. They don't look very central at the moment. So for instance, I go through, and I look at this point. Well, it's this distance from that point and that distance to this point. So maybe I'll, I'll assign it to the, the purple center. I look at this point and I go, oh, it's maybe this distance from there and that distance from there is clearly closer to there. I'll assign it to here. Maybe I look at this point and I go, uh, it's probably closer to here. This point is definitely closer to here. This point is definitely closer to there. Um, this point is a, a toss-up. Uh, maybe I'll, 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 I don't know, I'll assign it to orange one. This point is uh, definitely closer to the orange one. Orange one. Orange one. Okay. So this is the center assignment point. We look at each point. We check its distance to every other point, and we assign it to its center. Um, so now we've assigned points to the center. Um, second step is um, we compute new centers. So we go ahead and we look and we, 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 we find the, the center point. Um, so here maybe the center of these is roughly there. So um, this is one new center. Maybe the center of these is roughly there. Um, and we repeat. And the way I've done things, uh, uh, it looks like nothing's going to change anymore because I think none of every point is closest to its center. But this could perhaps go on a number of steps. Um, questions so far? Okay. Uh, quick comments. Uh, so this is a basic algorithm. People try lots of things to improve it. Uh, uh, comments. Uh, how do you choose the initial centers? Uh, a typical cheap and dirty way is you actually put set, you, you look at your set of points and you put your centers at random on some of the points. Just don't put two centers on the same point. Okay, so that gets you points somewhere in the space. Uh, second comment is, is because depending on how you initialize, you'll get a different result. You know, it's it's natural to perhaps run k-means if it's fast on your data a few times over, and look at which uh, clustering perhaps gives you the smaller objective, with the belief that small objective clusterings are perhaps better. So, uh, Other comments. Uh, so we randomly uh, permute to choose. Uh, if you're looking to do much better with the k-means algorithm, uh, maybe an often way of improving this setup is by putting a little more intelligence in choosing your initial central points. OK, questions? OK, let's continue. Okay, so the k-means algorithm is it's on your coursework if you, you, you want to look at it at the same time, but um, k-means algorithm converges, um, uh, which is a good thing for an algorithm to do. Um, how do we, we argue it? Well, the argument's fairly simple. Um, argument is, well, when we do step one, that, that uh, sum of squares objective that we define decreases. When we do step two, the objective decreases. The objective is bounded below by zero. Uh, so at least no matter what, we uh, converge in, in, in value because we have a, a, a decreasing sequence of numbers bounded below. Um, uh, it's worthwhile thinking a moment longer about uh, uh, k-means convergence. If you think back, for, for those of you who, who worked on the first coursework, or you think about gradient descent. Uh, I've heard this thing, does gradient descent converge finitely or infinitely? What this means perhaps isn't clear. I mean, as you run gradient descent and, uh, you know, except in 
uh, very lucky cases, you know, you keep getting closer and closer and closer and closer to your solution, and so it doesn't converge in a finite sense. It doesn't take a finite number of steps to get to the solution normally. Um, a question we might want to ask ourselves about k-means, there seems to be some mix of the, uh, the discrete and, and the continuous here. We can look at things in terms of a, our, a partition or the centers. Um, is Does k-means converge in a finite number of steps always, or are they, does it sometimes take an infinite number of steps to converge? Um, what do you think? Well, for k-means, you, you can show that it converges in a finite number of steps different than, than gradient descent. And um, that's one of your, your coursework exercises, too. We know that it converges in this sense. Now you also want to argue that it converges in a finite number of steps. Um, how do you do that? Uh, that's the question I asked you. Uh, once more, I, I love random comments and computational complexity. K-means generally converges fast, but whatever that means. But there are examples of, of cases where you have n m points and n dimensions, and you know the numbers are reasonably large, where where k-means takes an exponential amount of time to converge in the problem sets. So it doesn't have to converge fast, but generally I think you'll find it converges fast. Okay, further questions? Okay. much what I just um, did on the board. Okay. So here's an example with um, uh, uh, four points and uh, imagine here, here, here's where they are in space and we want to uh, uh, cluster them. previous picture, we'll make A and B uh, these bottom two points, and we'll, we'll random, somehow we randomly selected these as our centers, and we'll go ahead and look at what the k-means algorithm does on them. Um, so this I'm just uh, kind of doing numerically what I, I did on the board before. We chose A and B as the centers. Now from, say this is center A and this is center B, we're going ahead and we're calculating the distance between um, each of the four points and then we'll do the assignment step. Uh, these, these notes are on the web page. It's useful for you. Um, so I, you can imagine that if I had my two centers here, that after I, I uh, calculated what uh, point was nearest to each point. These three points were nearer to that center. This point was, was nearest to itself. So after we uh, do the um, find the new center steps, this is only one point, so it sits there. Uh, this, this point is now kind of roughly the average uh, uh, distance between these three here. I'm going ahead and computing that average. Uh, I think in the coursework, I ask you to prove why, why calculating the average is the right thing to do.
questions about how k means works. Okay, let me go over the coursework then. showing you how to compute the centers. I'll ask you to uh, prove why that's correct. Okay. Uh, coursework's divided up into uh, three sections. Um, um, so I'm going to ask you to implement the, the k-means algorithm. Uh, send me the MATLAB code. Um, Problem two, I'm going to ask you to um, generate uh, uh, k-means data from some Gaussians and then go ahead and cluster it. i um, going to also ask you to use uh, MATLAB to uh, produce a, a movie of your clustering algorithm in action to kind of take a, a snapshot of each picture where the center has moved to. Um, okay, the, the, the challenging parts on, on problem two and problem three is in the following, which uh, will require you to think a little bit about what's going on. Um, I've done something with my eraser. Even if we have a, a clustering algorithm, we can imagine using it in a, a, a predictive sense. If our, our, table, uh, if our uh, data has labels, um, um, so for instance, um, um, So if you, if you look at um, equation 4 on the, the practical, this is how I'm going to ask you to uh, compute the error of, of k-means on, on, on labeled data. Um, what's the issue? The, the issue is the following. When you, when you run k-means, what does it give you? It gives you... Uh, it divides your data into some k classes. Now the question is, is then suppose your data was also labeled in k classes, whether it's your training data, your testing data, whatever. And you want to measure the performance of k means on your data. You know, there's a little bit of question, how do you naturally define an error measure and how easily is it to compute? The error measure which I'm going to uh, suggest is the following. Um, So maybe k-means has, has, has placed your data into three classes. Red, green, sorry, those should be circular balls rather than ellipses if it's really k-means. One circular. Um, now, now, so it, you know, these were the names of our three classes, and then maybe we have blue, and we have a couple of red, maybe we have a green. Um, then over here, maybe we have a bunch of red points. Blue, and, um, maybe here we have 
really green. Um, now, if you look at this par partitioning, uh, uh, somehow, yeah, it seems like we're, we're, we're getting the, the, it's a pretty good partitioning. But the point when measuring the error is we've put, you know, probably this should be the red circle and this should be the blue circle, okay? Um, and so somehow we're going to say what the error is. Um, the error is the permutation of the circle colors which minimize the number of mistakes on the true data, i.e. here if we count the number of prediction errors here, we'd make a prediction error here. Here we'd make a prediction error on both of those. Here we would make a prediction error on, on, on these. Okay? Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to choose the permutation of the class labels that minimizes the prediction error. Uh, that's what that uh, uh, symbol says there. Okay? So, um, this can be a little bit tricky, so uh, but make sure you do that. Because you can tell if your code's working or not by looking at the error without going. Okay, uh, so two is on the uh, fake data set, the one you're going to generate from some normals. Uh, there's a link on the web page, since the notation isn't the clearest, that gives you. The, the few lines of MATLAB code which will generate that random data set for you. So uh, going to the web page, you, you'll get that code. Uh, three is arguably a little bit more interesting. Uh, I think I put a MATLAB on the web page. There's a, a MATLAB map matrix with this data. Otherwise, you can just grab it from um, uh, the UCI uh, archive, which has a number of machine learning data sets. And here, ask you to run k-means clustering on the iris data set. It's a, a relatively small data set. It has three classes, uh, 50 instances of each type. Of type. Each type corresponds to some sort of uh, iris that's a plant. And uh, you know, then you have sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. And uh, you're going to go ahead and see how well your k-means clustering runs on it, and I'm going to ask you to, you know, since you get a different solution, if you had to start with a different objective each time, I'm going to ask you to run a hundred times and uh, submit your answer. Okay, so that's the, the, the practical part. Um, then I'm going to ask you some uh, questions about um, the method. Uh, the questions I'm going to ask you about are the following. Uh, first one, uh, uh, want you to give an argument and, and show a, a simple data set to associate with your argument to show that um, this data set has local minima with respect to the k-means objective. Um, um, so the k-means uh, objective is, of course, this. And uh, then give code an assignment uh, arguing on the find the centroid step. Uh, I want you to argue that the centroid is the minimizer of that, uh, something that I think maybe you've done now a few times or related type computations before, I want you to uh, come up with a brief uh, argument where you're going to take a local derivative and uh, take, a, take a gradient, set it to zero, and, and prove that uh, that's the, uh, that the centro centroid is the minimizer of the square distances. Um, and then three is perhaps a slightly more challenging question of does uh, uh, K means uh, conversion of finite number of steps. Uh, I mean, I want you to prove that it does. Okay. Uh, questions? Okay. Um, 
Let me, okay, so the extension problems are, 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 are meant to be harder. Um, so let me uh, discuss the extensions. Is there an extra copy of the coursework still? No. The coursework's available on the internet, right? The coursework is Amazon. available on the internet. I, I just want it for a minute or two anyway. Um, okay, I, I want to describe the, the first uh, problem now. Eraser. Okay. Um, want to take this idea of k means and uh, want you to come up with a, I'm going to propose another optimization problem which I'm going to want you to solve, which is this k means segmentation problem. Okay? So, not quite the same as k means, but, but related to it. So, the idea now is that our data points uh, are now perhaps some form of time series data, okay? Uh, there's some sort of natural order on the data. So we have data points x1 through xl. Now, just because we have data points x1 through xl, I just want to point out that there's no ordering in this sense. Even though our, we have some time sequence of data, but you should imagine these as, 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 as points in Rn, and things can be all over the place. Um, you know, this probably doesn't have a great segmentation. Okay, but we have a sequence of points. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now, previously, what you did with k-means was you found you had k-centers, and you tried to divide these into uh, balls. And you're going to, in fact, do the exact same thing here, except we're going to restrict things a little bit. Before, CK was all possible partitions, i.e. there was some sort, some form of uh, K to the N possible partitions. Now, Instead, I don't want you to find a, a, a partitioning, but I want you to find the segmentation, i.e., perhaps 1 through I1 is the first uh, segment, I1 through I2 is the second segment. These segments are in order of the data points, and you know, IK minus 1 plus 1 to IK is the Kth segment. So what would so let's say we were partitioning this sequence into uh, two segments. What are the the, 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 the possible partitions? Well, there's um, x1 is one segment, x2, x3, x4, dot, 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 x7 is the second partitioning. Then we have a second segment x1, x2, x3, dot, 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 x7, all the way down to um, x1 through x6, x7. So these are the, if I only have two centers, these are the, the, the set of possible uh, segmentations of a sequence, okay? And we have the exact same objective function as before. We, we still want to find uh, centers. The difference now is that we're, our, our, our discrete part of it is now uh, uh, a partitioning. Okay. Um, what makes this problem fun uh, This is the difference. This is what's the fun about this problem. Is now k means 
you gave an algorithm, the Lloyd's algorithm found a local minima, you know, more or less efficiently. You know, sometimes it can run slowly. Uh, the segmentation problem is easier than the partitioning problem in a computational sense. What I mean by that is there exists some <laughs> algorithm which is polynomial in K and in L that finds the exact global minima, not some arbitrary uh, local minima. And so extension one is for you to uh, find that uh, algorithm, argue that it's the global minima, and uh, show that your algorithm is efficient in a polynomial sense. Questions? Okay. Uh, two. Basically, we, we, we're, we're going to just have a, a two. Let's say we don't want to use the Euclidean distance. Um, and we don't want to use something that comes out with a kernel function. Well, wh what, what can you do? Um, well, here's something you could do. Uh, you could define this other thing, which acts like a distance function. Um, it's not a metric. It's not symmetric. Uh, uh, there's some other issues which makes it not a metric. Um, um, but what I want you to do is, with this other distance function, which uh, when p is 2, you'll observe that this is exactly the same as the Euclidean distance. Um, I, I want you to um, come up with an algorithm that uh, minimizes the subject. Uh, but um, you know, just like with uh, uh, k-means, we can't guarantee that we're going to uh, converge to a global minima. Um, you know, I'm happy if, with an algorithm that converges to a local minima. Um, so your steps is, if you look on the previous page, you know, the main thing you're going to need to do is we had some update step, uh, which was equation three. For the PK means algorithm, you'll need to compute a new update step. And just for algebraic purposes, if it makes your argument simpler, you can assume your, your inputs are all non-negative. Um, okay. Questions? Okay. <coughs> See how we're doing. Well, let me give you back your uh, coursework. Okay. So. Um, this is what I, 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 I propose now. Um, OK, um, let's take our, our first break for, for 10 minutes. After that, that, that first break, uh, you have two choices, or, or even more in the world of choices. You can go to the lab and start directly working on, on the coursework um, or on, on the lab exercises, or two, uh, what I will do, and uh, it's not useful for you, I will go through the notes which I've just uh, uh, I, I've distributed a copy so you can see the flavor of what I'm going to do on uh, MATLAB part three, and I'll, I'll, I'll go through those notes at um, perhaps a faster pace than I did last week, and then I will head to the lab. Um, so do whichever is most useful for you, um, and I'm I'll be available for questions in the lab. And uh, next week, we start Mathematica, which uh, I love Mathematica. <laughs> Mathematica is a great tool. So make sure you download it. And, and uh, you can do very neat things with Mathematica. And it's uh, free for you, at least while you're a student. OK. Um, I'll see you in, in 10 minutes in here.